<laughs> if that stall trade was on the table for a for Boston's first rounder and a player, that is exactly the type of move that I think you need to make yes. when those opportunities present themselves. Absolutely. I mean, they have to start stockpiling assets. I mean, that's, yep. that's what you have to do when you're trying to replenish the cupboard. And, or I should say, or, you, you know, you, you take the whatever, wherever Boston's going to draft, which is probably going to be in the low teens, early 20s, right? It's, well, actually, they could, I mean, they could go all the way, right? So who the hell knows? But whatever that pick is, let's just say it's, for the sake of argument, let's say it's the 31st pick, right? Um, but what, plus our 11th pick or 10th pick or whatever, right? And, and maybe you can move up into the, into the top three or four picks. Yeah. Yes. Yep. But you got to, yeah. But, it's, but you have to have you the gotta gather first. the chips. Yeah, no, I, I think that was that showed some bizarre. Yeah, I mean, the, I want to I want to give him the benefit of the doubt, Fenton. You know, first year first year GM and you know whatever. But a he took a sweet time evaluating the thing anyway, and so he didn't just rush into these trades. It's not like he made these trades in October, uh, and and then also he, he's made some just weird decisions and. And it looks like he's playing this. He thinks he's playing this on a on an Xbox, and I don't. And he's clearly not. So that's it's hard to give him the benefit of the doubt at the same time as you want. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Well, hopefully you can parlay if he does trade Zucker and get a first round pick in some aspect. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. year. Um. Did Al Stalock show you guys anything the last two games? Yeah, who needs Doom, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, it was nice to get throw him a bone, right? And I, you know, I don't think he's, I don't think he's a not, you know, he he's a type of guy who should win, you know, since once since January, whatever fifteenth or whatever it was. But um, but he's just a backup. I mean, I, he you know he seems like a great guy, but he's just a backup. I mean, he's he's not. That's his ceiling. No, yeah, it is. Um, but he he played. He certainly did played well for the last couple of games, and you feel terrible about the way the team played in front of him. Although I'm glad they did. Right. Yeah. Um, I just want to point out that the. The one team in the league. Hang on a second. I just want to. I just want to confirm this before I say it. But all all these other stats that are out there. One. I think I know where you're going with this. In the entire league, finished out of the playoffs, but with a positive goals differential. That was Montreal, largely aided by Ryan Paling's hat trick, because they finished plus thirteen. Right. And they Every, also won seven of their last ten down the stretch. Right. Every other uh, every other non-playoff team finished with a negative goals differential. I wonder how many years that's been the case. You know? That's interesting. Um, in other words, that's a pretty easy determinant and a pretty conclusive one. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, so... Sa- uh, same exact thing for last season. Yeah, um, Florida Panthers, the only team at plus two. Interesting. Uh, maybe, right. maybe maybe we'll run the pattern on this a little bit more because um, um, because who needs? I mean, like you look at the Wild. The Wild, the Wild's the weirdest Corsi team ever, right? Whatever they generate, they're not they're not cashing in. So they got to miss more scoring chances than any other team in the league. Oh, oh <laughs> for sure, they've got to be the least efficient team in the league period although dallas while i was watching the game last night i was like jesus dallas you look like us right now they had so (laughs) many chances to score (laughs) yeah yeah. but until they finally did in the third so who uh, think about the roster for a second the wild roster this season um who who do you think who had a good season Spurgeon? Um, yeah. Agreed. I would say Parisi was good. 
Yeah, I mean, he led the team in goals with 28 or whatever he had. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Felino and, and Fair on balance. Yeah, I don't di- I don't disagree with that. But when they're at the, when they're at top of mind in this conversation and they're fourth liners, what does that tell you? <laughs> that's exactly my point. <laughs> yeah, that's bad. That, that's real bad. Um, Aberg, you want him to be qualified? Do you think they're? Do you think? I mean, we don't know whether or not we think he'll be qualified. But God, I I, I would be. Not disappointed if they are, if they don't qualify him, right? I mean, and, and I worry that Fenn's going to say, "Well, I can't have one of my first moves end up being a flame out," right? I didn't have a problem with Aberg the player because I mean, you gave up a career American leaguer. That's what you gave up for Aberg, yeah, so yeah. I, I don't have any issue with that necessarily, but. I mean, why was Aberg on the power play at times? And I, I don't know, just kind of some weird things around that. And then, you know, I think was it was it the Aberg acquisition that the essential trickle down was uh, Prosser, yeah, going down but, to uh, Iowa. I think it was Batetto. That was Batetto, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. But those are the things. Like again, no issue with giving up essentially a career minor leaguer for Aberg, but just those trickle down things make you wonder if if Fenton had any sort of a you know big picture vision when he was making moves. Yeah, that's what I meant by just just an Xbox sort of mentality. I get yeah. that guy's available. Let's go get him. Ooh, that guy's. I know that guy. Let's let me get, see if I, let me claim that guy. I mean, the biggest question I have about Aberg is how the hell did he score eleven in Anaheim earlier this year? <laughs> uh, I tell you one thing: we're paying Tyler Ennis one point two million next year, cap hit to not play for us. I'd rather have him playing for us than Pontus Aberg. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh. By the way, I, JT Brown's under under contract for another season after this. Just FYI, isn't Patterson two more seasons? Yeah, at two and a quarter mil. It feels like a lot for a third line or a sixth defense. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I would agree with that. As our as uh, our friend uh, uh, Green Star from the old Russoville always says, the Wild doesn't have enough players making under a million dollars. Uh, in, in key positions, although they, they do right now with the trades and the injuries, but um, but general, I mean, you know, like pattern as a third pair to D with two and a quarter million is a perfect example. Of that. I mean, was he, you know, Sealers seven and a quarter, seven seven hundred twenty five thousand was his, is his salary for the next two seasons after this, right? Same term as pattern. You know, are we are we really are we getting a third of the production of pattern from Sealer? I don't think so. Right. And I think I think Patteron started out really well when he and Sealer were paired together on the third pair. Yeah, he was exposed on the second pair. Exactly right. As yeah. soon as Dumbo went down, that's as a I can't put it better than that. Uh Patteron was pretty much exposed for what he is. So he's still a two and a quarter million dollar third pair D. Yes. Yeah. And that is the other thing. Like, if you look at the good teams around the league, they're not a mad dumba injury away from total downward spiral into the abyss. Exactly. I mean, there's teams that have lost all kinds of. Uh, I I feel like Tampa lost Stamkos for most of the year last year, and they might be you know the outlier because they're so good. But you shouldn't be one player, and it really doesn't matter who the player is from just being completely worthless the rest of the year. <laughs> yeah, remember, it, it used to be Koivu was that one player. When he went yeah. down, we, we just, you know, the wheels fell off. Dear Lord. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, it's a great point, Mike. It's a great point. Uh, okay, so uh, n- nobody had a good season this season. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I don't, I, I've been defending Stahl, not for the season per, this season per se, but because over the life of his contract, we we got way more than we 
bargained for. And I, mean, I, I don't that that's got to be the best single contract that Fletcher did here. In uh, other than maybe I don't you know maybe Spurgeon, but 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 we we got far more utility from Stall for the three years of three and a half ninety some odd goals than than we really had any business getting. Absolutely agreed. But at the same time, I don't. That doesn't make me feel obligated to have nope. re-upped him for two more years. Totally. I mean, and, yeah. that's what that's what the player personnel business is. It's using people. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's no room for Minnesota nice in that stuff. No. How about uh, how about Russo's story about Johan Garpenlov and asking him about our 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 draft pick last year? The what the, what was the kid's name? Oh, yeah, the Swedish kid. Uh, and Garpenlov, who puts together the, the Swedish... Did you hear the story on the podcast? I did, so, yeah. So good. <laughs> Unbelievable. But but here's the thing. Didn't Flair run the draft table last season? He did. I, I'm convinced that was just one last big F you to the Minnesota Wild organization by Flair. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but at it, the same time, you, if you're Fenton, I don't... It doesn't matter if you're not running the draft table. You were in Nashville's midseason draft reviews. Right. Like right. you cannot when as soon as that guy Flair brings it up because clearly he had to know about that he was high on the board beforehand. Like look into it. Yeah. When you see that they're picking a second to third rounder in the first pick, like it's still going to go down in you know as your first round pick. Right. Whether right. you were seeing the table or not, you have to know more or know better than to allow that to happen. Well, the buck he's still the general manager. The buck still stops exactly. with him. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I, I don't I don't know if Flair's at KG, but I think that's what it I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense. Because and yeah. again, as we talked about before, the alternative is it fends an idiot. And and I just I just <laughs> dear God, that cannot be the case. Please let that not be the case. A uh, question for you guys. In your opinion, who do we see in a wild uniform first? Philip Johansson or Iro Elo? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> who the hell is Iro Elo? <laughs> That's exactly right. He's the hotel that we drafted, right? Wasn't it wasn't it a hotel that Russo tracked it down to? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh I don't think we'll ever see Johansson. No, no. He's going to be Europe-bound forever. Oh, um, God, that's a big miss. Holy cow. Yeah, well, it's the wild way. That's how we do. Um, all right, so it, it should be an it, it, it has the, up, the, the potential to be a very interesting summer. Uh, but it's the wild, right? And they're from Minnesota, so who the hell knows? But um, you know, I, we hear, I don't know if you guys read the hockey news is, um, like power and hockey or whatever episode or issue. Uh, I happened to read it earlier this year and it, it listed Leopold as one of the most influential owners in the league. So influential in what way? Like, like, uh, has Gary's ear kind of thing. Oh, okay. Um, pay so, him some to give us the lottery. Exactly. Let's see. Let's see. You know, I mean, it's time for, you know, your you bonus with the winter classic, although I don't personally have a, think that's getting boned, but, um, uh, and, um, you know, you, you stick us with the cap recapture nonsense, uh, you know, changing the rules, uh, right after we sign Parisi and Suter. Um, it's time to do us a solid. Let's, let's, let's win the lottery here. We'll see how much influence he has. All right. Uh, well, let's uh, let's skip over to some Minnesota goodbyes. This has been a really uplifting episode. Um, thank God for the Twins. Well, it was and, an uplifting season. <laughs> who had the who had the who hit for the cycle the other day? Was it Polanco? Yes. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You know that. Now that you bring that up, that kind of sticks in my craw. Uh-oh. The cycle is one of the stupidest accomplishments or feats that is celebrated in all of baseball. 